Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to look at replacing um, all of the stanchions on the Fireball, the Probotic Fireball V90. So, as I've talked about in the in past videos, I've got this thing when it first came out. Oh gosh, it seems like about eight years ago. Um, and so it's it's been it's been a good CNC. I haven't used it a lot in, lately in the past, and I've just started again. But as you kind of see, this is the way it actually came with these these uh, plastic stanchions, then washers, and it's all kind of hokey, but it's worked. And and in here, there's also a solid brass bushing, and it's kind of a little bit jury rigged. And again, this is the way I got it about eight years ago when the whole CNC movement was just starting. And so one of the things I do is want to use 3D printing to help clean this up. So I've developed an OpenSCAD uh, applet, if you will, to print new ones of these. And uh, I'll cover that out also on the um, OpenSCAD channel. But, but for this one, I want to talk about this a little bit because I'm going to print a replacement. And then also I'm going to try, I'm going to try to use these. So I got these. These are... These are 3D uh, strain relief. These are laser cut aluminum instead of that big brass honker on there. Uh, I may have to mill this out on the lathe. Um, however, one of the pieces I want to show is if you look inside there, if I could get the camera inside, it's a little bit dark. But, um, you know, this is a pretty big brass bushing. And uh, so to take the measurements here, I'm going to have to probably compensate because this is a little bit shorter. So I'm going to probably have to, um, uh, you know, make it a little bit shorter to accommodate this, move it up a little bit close. And I got the room, so not a big problem. I just kind of want to talk about that. Um, so if you if you go ahead and do this, maybe you've got an old fireball, or maybe you've got an older CNC, you want to do some of these modifications too. Just some of the things to think through. So so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go take a look at printing out this and then we're going to go through the process of replacing this. I'm actually going to do all three axis, axes. They'll all be the same, so I'm only going to do a video on doing the one and, and the other three or two are uh, going to be just like this one. So let's go take a look at making the part. Okay, so here we are back and we've got the motor bracket printed out. came out rather nice in yellow PLA. decided to try to match it up a little bit to the motor. So uh, the piece that always amazes me is um, this is nothing but a bunch of mathematical equations which relate to something in, in the real world. So again, as you recall, in OpenSCAD we created this through a bunch of mathematical formulas and here we go. So it uh, actually turned out pretty nice. So let's go assemble it on the... Um, CNC and see how it turns out. Okay, welcome back. So we had the introduction where I wanted to change out the um, Y-axis uh, here 
on the Probiotic Fireball V90, so I did that. And I decided also to switch out the Z and the Y also. So again, these were all printed with the uh, Open SCAD um, uh, snippet that I wrote. Uh, I'm going to make it actually a Thingiverse customizer, um, probably in another video on the Open SCAD channel. So anyways, uh, it was quite the job actually to remove these motors. These motors have been mounted for eight years into a brass coupler and uh, to say the least, what I thought was going to be an easy project was not so easy at all. The other thing I attempted to do as part of this was machine out some of these uh, couplers and uh, the size was correct for the stepper motor, however not for the Acme screws that I had in these. So I took it on the lathe and uh, I'll show a time lapse up above um, of me uh, drilling this out and everything on the lathe. But one of the things after I installed it on the uh, on the y-axis I noticed a problem and I don't know if you can see it but it, it, when I twist it when I would reverse just it by spinning the handles like this um, the tension would actually expand and contract this. See so you can see this how it's uh, squishing I hope and so it was uh, creating about an eighth of an inch lag so it just simply wouldn't work so I had to switch back to the brass uh, couplers. I was hoping to get this because um, the, uh, th there's actually like Durlin bushings inside here with stops. I don't know if you can see it over here, but th you know, it's kind of crude. Again, this is an eight year old machine, uh, and that just simply wouldn't work with the tension. So I had to go back again to the solid brass. What I did do also underneath on the Y axis is I also placed a, th a thru thrust bearing. I'll spit it out at the far end for it to push against. Um, because, in short, what happens is the Acme screw in these uh, just sit in two skate bearings and it holds it. And again, just like this here, I mean, it's got a just a locking collar that kind of holds tension on both sides. And because this screw is so long, it, it's causing me a little bit of issue. So I put a thrust washer and a thrust washer, sorry, a thrust bearing, not a washer. It's got washers, but it's a bearing. Instead of, tur you know, having bearings that go this way, they're in the face, so when, when the two plates press together, there's a set of roller bearings that press together and it rolls on that, and um, so that, that's really helped in, in moving this a lot smoother and putting cross tension. I wanted to put a spring, and, but I didn't have any springs that size, and I didn't want to go into that big of a project, so just got the thrust washer on there and I pressure fit it because what I did is I kind of set the collar, then set this and screwed this in. So anyways, um, very happy with the way the project turned out. It doesn't look as, as hokey as it did before, uh, so I'm a lot happier with that. Everything fits well. The customizers, uh, brackets came out pretty good. Printed these in yellow PLA, uh, I think I might have mentioned. So 1.2 millimeter uh, shells, 50% uh, infill, really sturdy. Um, because these bolts, these, um, I think they're like a number eight thread in there pretty well. And so hold it uh, tight. So again, really happy with um, all this. And again, these don't really take a, a lot of torque. The initial torque is, is downward. And, you know, obviously the four screws hold the torque. And, you know, as it pulls it, it I think it'll be uh, more than plenty. So anyways, uh, Hopefully you found this build interesting, so kind of a combination of 3D printing, CNC. And so, hey, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, I'll have uh, links to this over on my OpenSCAD, and then eventually I'm going to throw this up on um, Thingiverse as a customizer, so the link's for that below. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, a lot more coming. Cheers. Click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.